Hi and welcome to the beginner's basic video number five. Now this is the last uh, video in this series for uh, an introduction to the trumpet. Uh, be sure to go to the uh, Mystery to Mastery website and uh, check out everything that's on offer there. If you want to take the studies that we're working on here further, I r highly recommend, of course, uh, the book that I've written. Now the reason that I put this out, and it was 10 years ago, and now continue to do the website is because as a player, I hit a point where I could not develop any further. And the things that I've learned and the things that I'm teaching you and sharing with you are things that I've learned that made me understand how the instrument worked and allowed me to progress further with my, my playing. One of the major things that was a real sticking point with me was articulation. Now, we're going to now start articulating or tonguing the notes that you've learned. Now, the way that I do it, and a lot of other people, it turns out, I eventually learned, tongue the way that I do. I was being taught to tongue with the tip of my tongue behind my top teeth, like saying, Now, when I'm playing, I cannot tongue like that. It's just not physically possible. And for ages I was being taught to do that and I couldn't and I thought my career is over. I'm not going to make it as a trumpet player. But then I read a book called Brass Playing's No Harder Than Deep Breathing by Claude Gordon. And it turned fantastic book. I learned a lot from it. It turns out that Claude, Arben, Herbert L. Clark and a, a, a wide variety of amazing players tongue the way that I do, which is keeping the tip of the tongue behind the lower teeth and using what I call the forward arch up behind the, up to the roof of the mouth. So the tip of the tongue stays behind the lower teeth. Now you don't have to articulate like that. If you do, that's great. If you can't, that doesn't matter. Uh, but it's something that really messed me up for a long time. And so I want you to recognize the difference. So if you're like me and you tongue that way, it's not a problem. And a lot of people, even professional players, have gone, wow, that's a wild way of articulating. And they've changed to it. So if it works for you, great. If you can't do it or it doesn't work for you, that's fine. So again, what I do, tip of the tongue behind the bottom teeth, I know that looks really attractive, but it gives you an idea of what's going on when I'm articulating. Now, either way, uh, what's happening is you've got the roof of the mouth. Well, let's do it like this. Here's the roof of the mouth, and the tongue is stopping the air ever so slightly. Some people actually tip with uh, tongue with the tip of their tongue between their lips. I don't recommend that. I don't do it but I guess some people do it um, naturally and it works for them. But generally we don't want to plug the lips because it's going to mess with the vibration of the lip. Um, so whether you're tonguing with the tip behind the lower teeth or it's going up to the roof of the mouth, either way, the air is being stopped and released. Stopped and released. So the air gets caught behind the tongue even momentarily then when you drop the tongue down, the air is released. Now, I must get you to understand that when you take a breath, now I'm expanding the body, then relaxing the muscles, so the body wants to go back to its position of repose, or it's just its natural, normal position. So it's like a balloon, when you blow a balloon up, then you let it go, it goes back to its normal size and the air comes out. For this range and for this exercise, that's what I'm doing. I'm expanding the rib cage and my breath and then stopping the air from coming out of my mouth with my tongue. So it's a release of air and then the lips are just sort of sitting there and then all of a sudden the air hits them and they start vibrating and then they stop and then they start again and then I stop when I release the air. So imagine a garden hose. You've got a garden hose and a trigger nozzle on it. The pressure's in the hose from the house you've turned the tap on. The 
pressure's in the hose, but it's not getting out because you haven't squeezed the trigger. As soon as you do, the water comes out. When you stop, the pressure's still in the hose, but it's stopping at the nozzle. So your tongue's like the nozzle. The pressure's behind the tongue, and it's not force, it's not strain, it's just the weight of the air. So I don't want any kicking from the huh, huh, huh from the body. I don't want the abdominal muscles pushing or kicking or anything like that. It's not that. That strains the body, okay? Keep this relaxed. Then if we use the visualizer. Or you can use your fingers. Get used to that feeling of the tongue releasing the air. Then of course the lips are just sitting there waiting for the resistance of the pipe or the trumpet. So that's articulating and tonguing. Now I've got some exercises here that I want you to do. We're doing crotchets, quavers and then a long note or quarter notes, eighth notes, and a long note. And it's very important that you do it with a metronome. So there's metronomes on apps and iPhones or little standalone machines. It's very important that you develop groove and time. Whether you're in an orchestra or a jazz band or a big band, timing is everything. So you've got to be able to count in time, feel the time in your blood, in your system, in your soul. What's your favorite song? What are you listening to at the moment? Have a listen. Next time you do to any music, have a listen to the pulse. Can you click with it or can you clap with it? Can you feel the beat? Can you anticipate where the beat's coming? So for these exercises, we're going to use a metronome and it's very important that we stay in time. Okay, now it's time for the final exercises. Now they're harmonic slurs, and what that means is changing notes on the instrument without changing valves. So we're going to go putting all valves down from C sharp to F sharp. Then we're gonna put first and third down and keep them down from D up to G. And then we're gonna play from C to G. So they're slurring, no tongue. Now these are very, very important exercises and it's crucial that you do them correctly from the beginning. Now there's a lot of material and a lot of people saying range comes from blowing hard in the body and we've definitely discussed that that is not the case. Volume comes from the body and if you want to play a big loud high note, yep, project your air outwards. But for developing great habits and efficient playing, I want to make sure that these harmonic slurs are done with a constant flow, so no kicking of the air and a change of shape. There's a change in the sound that I'm emitting and there's a lot in that sound from the body meeting 
the the notes in the instrument so it's very important again don't kick the air in this low register you can actually blow harder which puts the lips under tension and it might make it click up but it's a terrible habit to get into because if you keep trying to do it up higher and higher and higher without understanding what needs to happen here the strain and stress in the body is immense and I spend my life uh, teaching people to stop pushing when they're getting up higher to develop uh, the the upper register it's 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 an awareness of the face that you need not a muscle punch so I want to get these harmonic slurs happening now I've done them quite slowly but speed them up and practice them when you get the C to the G really quickly your playing will improve out of sight really quickly but at the start just take your time with it perhaps even try if you're having trouble starting on the top note and falling down top note falling down and just experiment starting at the bottom and bending up might be tricky so do them both ways um, and do them every day and in a month's time when you can do them quickly you'll find yourself progressing a lot faster than the other guys around who aren't doing these exercises so the harmonic slurs very important practice diligently every day and you'll improve really quickly all right good luck with them uh... I hope you've enjoyed these uh, five lessons uh, get the book and it takes you all the way through up into the upper register and makes sure that no gremlins creep into your plane we want your technique in the foundation stage and then going up into the higher register to be really really strong and I've laid that out in a way that it just goes step by step by step by step to make sure that you've got all the basics covered and there's no issues arising uh, check out the website please send me an email and say good day and uh, I hope to see you soon all the best